<laughs> Fuck no. Started laughing. That shit's crazy, bro. Hell yeah, I bro. I, when I get nervous, my little better. That's it. That's a wrap. I'm that. I was that fat boy when you put on a backpack, your back is sweating right away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, it toast a light podcast, man. Let's take a quick little toast, everybody. My guy Brian. Oh, Crudo. He's here. Dylan Crudo. We had fun last night, though. We had fun last night. Yeah, that was fun. Woo! So, if you're taking a shot of your coffee in the morning, We've been posting now later at, later in the afternoon, so agua, especially on a Monday, make sure you drink your, your agua. I know we all need water, but... Don't care about life. <laughs> Don't care about life. Everybody's host, Dusko. Yeah, we know your Mr. boy Dylan. Dylan. It's also like podcast. Thank you guys all for subscribing, watching, tuning in. If you're crying with our podcast, I love you. If you're talking whatever comments, we still love you. But we have... Another funny guest. Oh, definitely, bro. Super funny guest. I think his content resembles probably almost everybody's uh, childhood growing up. Hispanic childhood. Hispanic childhood. But from from a long way out. Traveled how many hours today? Ocho horas. Chingas. No, yeah, that's man. been our Maneje ocho horas. <laughs> y me dejaron allá afuera. Dos horas. <laughs> Yeah, they're laughing because they know it's true. No. Yeah, humble, humble was calling me like, how many times did he come here? Three bro, times? I called him like two times. I thought they were going to ghost me. I was like, bro. No, it's because I have oh, the, I have the, I didn't save your number. I didn't, oh. ah, I didn't, I didn't save his number. My bad. Before oh. we get, before we keep going, we got the one and only Mr. Brian White Breezy in the house, baby. Yes, I, I want to. I apologize, bro. No, no, no. I apologize. It's good, it's good, it's good. You know, it was a wild night. That's why it was a wild night. <laughs> it was a long night. Yeah, I had a babysitter. So. You guys made a connection even before we made a connection today. I had no idea he was gonna be there. We were talking shit. We were talking shit to you last night. We're you like, were talking we shit out. to me. Yeah. Let's get no kiss. So you don't wait. Yeah, I know you told no me. Did you, you send him the picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I got the picture. picture. <laughs> One of us has to be responsible. One which, of us oh, has to okay, wait. Okay. One, One of us, which is me. I'm the I have to go meet him. That that's the responsible part. If he shows you how many times I texted him. That's a wake up. Oh, so who's the manager? Over there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's over there. Over there. The, yeah, so one, two, our shooter, Jose. At least those two keep us on check. So yeah, shout yeah. out Ashley, shout out Pepe. They keep us on check. Yeah, he was at the, uh, yesterday. <laughs> he was at the, <laughs> <laughs> crazy. That's funny. I was telling him, I was telling him, I was like, bro. I was like, bro, that's your manager? He's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Los dos en el mismo lugar, ¿no? Yeah, I was, I was about to throw hands. No, nah, if, if he wasn't there, he, you probably would have seen Dylan just laying down outside the club or something. Yeah. No, no, no. I was, I, was, I was not even drinking. I babysit the whole night. Like, I, I literally had, babysat my drink the whole fucking night. I took one shot or I put it. We took like three. Shut the he's fuck like, up. No, Shut the know, fuck no, up. No, no. Hey, Shut this, the fuck up. This was one of, he's one of those, I'm sure you have friends like that that say, ah, oh, fool, I'm not drunk, fool. And he's just like looking at you all funny, <laughs> eyes all glossy and shit. And just like, are you serious? He's like, bro, nah, I'm fool. fine. Bro, I'm fine. <laughs> bro, I'm fine. I love you, Phil. I Man, love you. But thank you for coming, bro. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for, I mean, creo que son que unas. This earlier in the month, we finally started talking. Mm -hmm. We made you cry on a couple of videos. Yeah. And, you know, that's why we're here, bro. But that's good. for the people that don't know our audience and maybe your audience that may not know, where'd you grow up? Where were you born and raised? Um, well, I'm Brian, my Brazy. Um, I grew up in uh, the Bay Area. So I was born in Martinez. Last name is Martinez. And uh, just regular Beaner shit, bro. Just regular beaner. I love, yeah, you know, I love that he said beaner. Just regular shit uh, with my fam. That's it. Yeah. Where, your, where your parents from? So my mom is from El DF. So from Ahí estamos, doña. Ahí estamos. Yeah, somos chilangos. That's right. That's but, right. That's right. Um, Wait, chilangos or capitalinos? They're two different things because I'm from the DF. I'm capitalino. Mm. Yeah, Chilangos is you move into the DF. Just say, he's more Mexican than me. <laughs> oh, he really is. Oh, really, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he really is. <laughs> he was part of it. Yeah, I didn't fucking say that shit. 
<risa> para que sepan. Para que, se, pa que sepan. Para que sepan, <risa> está buscando ahorita para papeles. <risa> Or, no. someone beat him up, you'll get papers. La green card. <risa> La green card. <risa> and are siblings? Yeah, I have uh, two sisters and uh, two brothers. Older, younger? Yeah, so I have an older sister, and then I would be the second one. Mm -hmm. And then my younger sister and my younger brother. Oh, shit, my oldest brother, yeah. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Ya no le des, ya quítale, ya quítale, ya quítale, ya quítale, ya quítale, bro. Damn, so you, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? So I'm 23. 23. Oh, that's what you guys fucking... That's what we vibe, that's what we vibe. Los dos desmadrosos a la misma vez. No, uno, dos, tres y cuatro desmadrosos, ya valió madre. Yo no quería, pero ayer estaba, ten, 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 ten. And I was like... No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 me vale. Ten, ten. Me vale. <laughs> no. no se me raje, güey. No, no se me raje. I mean, we were already there. I mean, para pa pa aprovechar lo que pagábamos ahí. ¿no? Está a huevo, a huevo. Yeah. No, man. So, what, how long ago did you start doing content then? Um, so, I've always done videos. Um, ever since, like, middle school, high school. But it didn't really pop off until I turned, what, 21, 22? Mm -hmm. um, on TikTok. So, that... But I've always been doing like YouTube and like music and stuff like that, and it started popping off. Cantante too. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Fernandez type shit. Uh -huh. You can sing a romantic. Oh, no, no. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, I'm just saying that would be a great video. Not lying. What? So music? Would you were singing back then? No, no, no. So I would rap. So like, yeah. So I'm, spit a rhyme. Would, so would, would you spit rhymes in high school? Spit a rhyme. Type uh, of thing. Well, it like so how I started rap in high school. Okay. And um, I would make, like, basically my music, like, in my closet and then just start rapping. And he was like, that one kid, turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, yo, check out my song. How does it sound? And it's not even mixed or anything. It's so, so bad. You hear the smoke detector and shit. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, that, that's how it was. Come then, the batteries. <laughs> yeah. But no, I've always done my videos, my YouTube videos. Usually, it was with my with my boys, so my mm -hmm. best friends. Yeah. We'd be just chilling in the car. We'd be like drinking and eating. It's kind of like a mukbang, I guess you would call it, but in the mukbang, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would always do that, and then um, I would post that on YouTube and also on TikTok, but it would never like go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was posting it on TikTok, and I'd be hella f happy, you know. I'd get like 50 views or like 100 views. I'd be like, holy shit, like what the heck. <laughs> And then I just kept on doing it for, I think, about, like, a year. And it just wouldn't pop off. And then I was like, fuck it. So I deleted, like, my whole page. And then um, one day, because I was coaching my cousin's team. So I, I was a coach. Like you, a you were coach. that type of coach? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we lost the game. And then I forgot what one of the kids said. Um, but they were like, oh, like, you should, like, make a video, like, a funny video. So I was like, fuck it. So I remember I was in AutoZone. It was my first video I posted on TikTok. Well, well, the new version of it, I guess, on the yeah. new account. But um, I was at AutoZone. I think something happened to my car, and I went to AutoZone. And then I don't know why, but I was like, all right, let me just put the, the phone. Like, let me just record a video. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally pressed the, like, two times speed so I could talk faster. And then I just posted it. Like, I didn't really think nothing of it. I didn't even think. It. Yeah, like, I didn't yeah. even think it was that funny, to be honest. <laughs> and then I posted it, and... Um, It was, like, in the afternoon. And by the nighttime, it had, like, a thousand views. And I was like, bro, I'm fucking famous. Like, holy <laughs> fucking famous. And then I woke up the next day to, like, a million something. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, shit. <laughs> and then I just kept it going. That's what's different about your content. Your, the, your voice, everything is, like, twice the speed. Mm -hmm. That's the funny part about it. Mm -hmm. That's... Have you seen this shit before, right? Nah, fool. You just hear it. Right. I, you know. <laughs> I had to put them... I'm sorry, but I had to put them on your shit. Oh. I had to put him on your shit, dog. Appreciate it, yeah, appreciate yeah. it. One more follower. One Almost more follower, close yeah. to that million. I don't know if he followed you, but he, he yeah. watches your shit. No, it's because he didn't follow me back. Oh. I'm okay. almost to 10,000 followers. I'm almost to 2,000. Yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, Not, but it, it's how he's saying. Your content is just, it's so different. It's, and realistically, too, it, it's just raw. Because of where it comes from. Like, if you were coaching, that's where this content is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, we see confidence. We see a comedian. We see someone that makes people laugh through his content. Was that always, when you saw that video pop off, did that, did it switch in, like, what you try to create at that point? Or was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, I want to make people laugh now? So, I feel like the type of person I am, I've always wanted to make people laugh. Either, like, laughing at me or laughing with me. Like, that, mm -hmm. I was always, like, the class clown in school. 
So, like, I would annoy a lot of people for sure. <laughs> but I felt like ever since a kid, I've always wanted to, like, make people laugh and shit. I don't know why. It's yeah. just, it makes me feel good. And it's also attention-seeking in a way because there's different types of attention you seek, right? Yeah. So I guess the attention I seek is, like, for people to laugh with me, for me to make them feel good, and that makes me feel good. So for sure, like, just fucking... When I started the videos, it was just to, to make people laugh. And also... And also, like, to make myself laugh, if that makes sense. Like, I remember I would post some videos. Well, and I still do. I post some videos that some people are like, oh, like this, I don't like this one. Or it doesn't get that amount of views. But I really don't care. Like, it's what I like, and I'm going to post what I like. So are you not tied into the to the views? No. I mean, at first, yes. So at first, like, was the sale of, like, un video de un millón. And then you get another one, and it's just millions and millions, and you're like, okay, we got to keep it up. And then you see, like, one video that does, like, half a million, and you're like, what the fuck? What's going on? What did I do wrong type of shit? And then you start focusing on that, and that's really bad. That's how I was at the beginning. Now it's like, I I don't give a fuck. Like, I've made thousands of videos. It's like, it's whatever. As long as it makes people laugh. And if it pops off, it pops off. That's good. But it got me here, so it doesn't really, I guess it doesn't really matter on the views now. When you started content, did you ever imagine yourself being in, in big platforms and being, you know, recognized by, you know, maybe people that we look up to when growing up and stuff? Yes. So ever since middle school, I always because I remember like in the cafeteria, I'd be with my friends and we're like, oh, we should be like YouTubers or we should do this and this <laughs> yeah. and that. And I always knew like if I did social media, I was going to like make it. I just didn't know how, though. Mm-hmm. you know, so. Thankfully, it popped off with the videos and not some other type of videos or some shit. So what, like, your inspiration? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, what if you would (laughs) have... Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. Stop drinking. (laughs) Stop (laughs) drinking. Hey, what if he would have kept going another year? Maybe the, his rap career would have kept going. Have you tried rap, your rap career now that you're popping again? Um, I'm trying to slowly ease it in. Because no lo puedo aventar así. Because then the thing is, like, when I post music, it's like, oh, what's up with these TikTokers making me? Or, like, so YouTubers, when, when like, I saw one of your little um, music video type of things, I was like, this motherfucker raps. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, is he trying to get somewhere, like, in a different direction? I was like, since when the fuck does this motherfucker rap? Yeah, so that's the thing. So a lot of people, it's like, because they don't know me, they're like, oh, look at this TikToker trying to rap, trying to do music. All these TikTokers want. It's not even like that, bro. And I'm not saying you're bad. I'm not saying you're bad, but it's just like. Stop this. (laughs) Stop this. Get this for out right now. No, but I've always been doing music since, like, high school. So it's like, the videos popped off first. So now it's like, I still want to do my music. So it's just. Slowing it in slowly. Because también si lo avientas así, it's, it's not going to sí, go si good. Si se putazo no se aprende. Yeah. A veces, güey. Sí, si Con lo avientas así. Cuando te dieron el putazo, aprendiste de verdad. ¿Cuándo me dieron el putazo? Cuando te hice la troca, perro. Sí, allá me dieron el putazo. <laughs> <laughs> Now that, like, you're, again, you're, you're not just someone just trying to make funny content. You're, at, you're making content and... Pretty much millions and multiple people know you. Ah! Eso me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. I thought you was gonna get on stage. Eso me gusta. Keep talking. Guess me up. <laughs> no, así me grito mi papá, güey. No, no quiero hablar. Eduardo. Eduardo. <laughs> oh, ¿Qué dijiste? <laughs> Puedo trabajar, güey. <laughs> Now, people. A lot of people know you. I hope. I hope. Right? Like, I mean, if people search up your, your social media platforms, it's not that you have one follower and 100 views. It's multiple millions. Mm-hmm. My sister follows the fuck out of this dude. We sent her a video oh, yeah, yesterday. We, yeah. video. we like, sent hey, her a video yesterday. Yeah. That was she funny was, as fuck. She was starstruck, bro. She was starstruck. What, Naomi? Yeah. Uh, Naomi, vete a dormir. Yeah. That shit was funny as fuck. Her son was still up running around. Oh, her fucking... <laughs> dude, her son is at this madre. That kid does not sleep till 4 a.m. Dude, do you... Do your parents, did, did they tell you anything prior to getting this big on social media? Or did they tell you, like, where to focus your energy and stuff like that? Um, no. Um, they found out kind of late. Like, on the... Media. Your parents don't have social medias like that? No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, they're old school, you know? Shit, my no dad has face- no, his, no, his, no Facebook. No, his dad's on TikTok, oh, Instagram, right. Facebook. Shit, my dad even wants to do a TikTok with her and, and shit. And then WhatsApp. He's everywhere, <laughs> like, He's everywhere. My dad's everywhere, bro. Like, shit. Shout out Cardoso, Saturnino. You already know, bro. 
Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> nah, 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 he's gonna see this shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> see this shit, shit. Nah. I'm playing. Nah, 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 nah. Si te llevas, cabrón. Ok, vas a ver. Vas a, si te llevas, te aguantas, cabrón. When, when did they find out then? How, how many followers or like what was that look like? Um, it it kind of like I didn't tell them. They found out from family. So it's like I would make my videos and I would say, okay, so like the first week, I think when I started like TikTok, I got like when I actually started it. I had like 10k followers that first week, so I was like juiced. Mm -hmm. I think it wasn't until like a hundred k, so probably like a month in when my family started to like notice that I was making videos. My mom, she likes the videos. She just says que like pues bájale con las groserías. <laughs> Obviously, but, yeah, yeah. Um, my dad, he knows, but we don't talk about it. As in, like we like it's just like a, it, it just exists, but yeah. we don't like. He doesn't talk about it. I don't talk about it. He knows I'm here doing this stuff, but it's just like I'm not like, yo, dad. Like, what do you think of this video? Like, no. Yeah. Well, my mom kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, they're. I think they're cool about it. I mean, my mom is super cool about it, but my dad, I have actually no idea. I don't want to ask him either. It's kind of. Are weird. you gonna ask him though? Because eventually, yeah. eventually, yeah, I'll ask him. Like, so what do you think of all these videos I made? You know, mm -hmm. but. Um, That'll, that'll be in the future. It's What? just, it, it's, I feel like it'd be too awkward. Because mm. the thing is, so I have, so it's my biological dad and my stepdad. To me, it's, they're both my dad, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So my stepdad, um, he's, what's it called? He was always very stern, very firm, okay. very serious, but he, uh, and like yelling. Yeah! Oh, so that's, where you get yeah. it. <laughs> that's where you got it from. Yeah. And my biological dad, but my my stepdad was never like uh, saying bad words like that. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't like saying bad words or anything like that. Yeah. My biological dad, he would scream, but he would say those type of words like, chingada madre, verga, like all that shit. Yeah. So that's where I kind of got it from. But yeah. he wasn't much as a, a screamer, I would say. He was more like chill, laid back. But well, my stepdad was definitely like the the firm. Just I see. I mean, not trying to get too fucking emotional here. You know what I mean? Not that we do. <laughs> we don't. Was that a plus having two dad figures, father figures in your life? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, because in a way, I would say I have like two families. Mm. So you get to see how two different families operate, two different marriages. Um, kids, you know, so siblings, you get, you get to see how that operates. Um, I would say I'm very lucky because um, they were both in my life. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have their fathers in their life and they resort to like gangs or shit like that. I'm thankful that my dad like steered me away from that because he, no. Like, I remember in middle school, tenía unos zapatos rojos. They were vans, bro. And I really liked them for the gym, like, because we had gym class. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, te me quitas esos zapatos. I'm like, why? Like, Porque están rojos. Yo no quiero ningún pinche pandillero. I was like, bro, it's oh, not shit. even like that. <laughs> Yo, oh. like, he was like, he was like that. He, yeah, so I'm But thankful it, I had him. I mean, probably just aware of the surroundings, too. Yeah. Of what probably he went, mm -hmm. went through growing up before, like, you got to that position, too. You never said where your dad was from? Uh, from Salcualpia. So I think it's like four hours away from El Efe. I think two hours ahead of Toluca. It's like a small little village. I have no idea where the fuck Toluca is at. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like small, it's what about uh, your stepdad? Um, oh, no, no, no. I'm wrong. So my stepdad is from, I believe, Salcualpia. And my biological dad is from... Fuck, I forgot how to pronounce it. Can Try, yeah, yeah, we got to. Go for it. Fuck. We Spanglish here. For we the Spanglish. No, no, no. I, no, I didn't forget. Uh, what's it called? No, I just forgot the place. What, <laughs> what about your mom? El DF. El DF too? Ya no le des a este güey, quítale. Yeah, 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 yeah quítame. Yeah, 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 no, I don't know where to look at. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm, I don't know where the fuck oh, to look at. Oh, I think uh, Guanajuato. Guanajuato. Ah, oh, I okay. think so. I think so. I don't know where the fuck that is yeah. too, but okay. <laughs> I don't know where shit's at. Someone turn What was that? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> someone, someone turn off his microphone fuck, real I'm quick. <laughs> I'm going to get the talk later, but... <laughs> turn... Your... You've been this person since way before, but music didn't work out. Comedy is working out, mm -hmm. and it's blowing up, right? And it's still continuously. Mm -hmm. 
did you have to like to get to this position you're in? Did you have to steer away from certain things in your life as eight from eighteen till now to make this shit work? No, um, I just been see like I think the issue also with my videos is because I'm cussing a lot and I'm just this might sound a little cocky or anything, but like. I'm just relatable. At least that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, Um, Because I see other content creators, and when they make, like, the Mexican dad or any other type of, like, it's just not, I'm sorry, it's just, like, not Not realistic. It's it's not realistic. Like, Mm -hmm. when I hear it, it's just, like, it's not funny to me. It's because it's aimed towards kids. Yeah. So they're going to find that shit funny, right? But um, it definitely slows down, I would say, my progress. Because overall, like, social media you know, social media companies don't want that type of content out there. Yeah. They want shit aimed towards kids. So definitely, I wouldn't change my type of style of videos. I'm going to continue how it is. Yeah. But it's definitely like a slow growth. What about like friend group? No, I still have my same friend group since middle school. Well, since elementary. Oh, so Sheesh. Yeah, seven guys. We tight. But, um, yeah, obviously, it's going to come to a point where they're going to have to do their own life. I'm going to have to do my own. But right now, we're just enjoying the vibe. And, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, I haven't – I'm pretty sure I've changed as a person, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as far as, like, my surroundings, I think that it's still the same. You know? How do you describe, like, your, your type of friend group then? If you've kept a solid relationship with these seven guys from elementary to now, mm-hmm. there has to be a certain quality that you guys all have that you guys just fucking are drawn to. Because I, I feel like when you have a group, when you have a team, they have to, they all have to meet at a certain intersection where just your morals, your vision, your grind is, is similar. Mm-hmm. And how, how we've talked about this many times. Like, I want my circle that whether I'm there or not, nothing bad is talked about. Yeah. You know, we're not in bad situations and we don't jeopardize our future in whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you kept this type of friendship for this long, what has kept you guys solid for this amount of time um honestly i think it's just all of us are afraid to like leave each other because we only got each other you know and i feel like also what's been keeping us for like mad long together is the fact that we're being real with each other so like there's some times where they tell me like straight up like yo i don't like that video like it's not funny and it makes you think and sometimes you don't want to hear it because yeah. i'm in my yeah, like yeah. creator mode like like, yeah, yeah. Que tú no sabes. you know, like sometimes that comes up in my head. And the other part is like Brian, where it's like, bro, they're telling you the truth. Like, maybe you shouldn't put that out there. Yeah. Maybe that's not good for the future. So um, it's being willing to also listen that keeps people together, at least I would say. So you guys are you guys are just real like that? Like you honest with each other? In a yeah. Sense? Yeah, I, I think they're very real with me. As do, do you some, it sucks, though. <laughs> do, do sometimes, like, do your friends check you or do you check them? Like, if they're acting out of line or out both, of pocket, in a sense? Both. Um, they, they check me more now mm. because, obviously, I'm getting bigger. And mm-hmm. I would say, like, my ego is also getting bigger, obviously. So, and it's also not just them, but my family, too. So I'm very lucky that, like, my family and my friends also keep me. I'm pretty check. sure she checks you. Too. Yeah, that, too. Yeah, yeah. But she got me by the... Nick. Yeah. <laughs> I know someone else the same way as you, big guy. <laughs> what the fuck? No. This dude. Nah, nah, nah. Look at that. But, it, you know, I how we, I said it earlier before, and I just, like, there's a village behind us. So in order for us to get to from point A to point B and even to point C, you know, you do have people behind you that support you, that keep you in check, keep you in line. And at the end of the day are just real as fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Whatever that message or whatever needs to be said, they'll tell you. And because I feel like if 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 they're not honest with you, then they're just egging on whatever yeah. bad habit is, is going on. Yeah. And you, you lead to that self-destruct where how you said, the more you grow, the more our ego grows, the more big headed we may go, or whatever yeah. the case is. But when they just bring you down to reality, man, ten toes down, hey, with you, I'm nobody. Yeah. But to the, like, right? I, I feel I feel that way. With the world, we may be somebody, but when I'm my friends, bro, I'm I'm nobody. I'm yeah. chilling, bro. And, and it's because they know me since like we're kids. So yeah. to them, like I could also feel like them getting annoyed sometimes, like when we're going when we're going out or some shit, and people recognize me in the street. Yeah. In their head, there's like, bro, this is Brian. Like this, like I've known this. He's my best friend. Like, yeah. why the fuck are you guys taking pictures with him? Like, he's a nobody. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's just be like that. It's just. 
the realness, you know. When what when was that first time you got recognized that kind of made you realize like, oh fuck. The the first time I got recognized was it's so funny. I went to Chick Fil A. It was in uh, Walnut Creek, and I still have the photo actually because they sent it to me. But I was just chilling. I think I was at like two hundred or three hundred k on like followers. And followers don't mean anything. Like, no, mas, that, no, mas, no, mas, no, 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 because yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah, that shit can be lost tomorrow, you know? So I try not to really focus on that. But I think it was at like 200, 300K. And then um, I'm just waiting for my food. And this little kid, and this is the first time I've ever like taken a picture with a kid. Most people that take pictures with me are like grown adults. Yeah. yeah. But this, the first time was a kid. So then um, I'm just waiting for my food. And this kid comes up, he's like, you're Mexican dad. Hell You're loud. Mexican dad. <laughs> Hell loud. And like all, and it was like it's a white community out there in Walnut Creek, uh, Chick Fil A. So it's just Walnut Creek. Walnut. Just just the name of yeah, Walnut, yeah. Walnut Creek. Yeah. So Walnut. everybody's just like looking at me, like who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and then uh, he's like, wait. And then he runs and he comes back with like an iPod. And then he's like. Can I take a selfie with you? And I'm like, you shouldn't even be watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> you should not be watching my videos. What's the parental guidance in this <laughs> shit right now? So then um, I was like, yeah, for sure. And then I, that was the first time I ever took a picture. It felt hella weird. But when I got in the car, I remember I got in the car and I was driving. I was like, bro, did I really just take a picture with someone? And then the other thing was like, bro, are my fans kids? Like, is that what it <laughs> you is? You do like a second thought. Yeah. Think, yeah. Let me look at my insights real quick. Let me look at my <laughs> demographics real, real but really fast. not like, uh, that, was, that was the first time. And it felt cool. It, it felt cool. And now it just, well, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens frequently. Hell yeah. Throughout, throughout your journey, has it ever gotten lonely? <laughs> not yet. Bring the water works, guys. <laughs> not yet. No, I was like, Dylan. Oh, you know, we got you, yeah. No, um, not yet. <laughs> no, you what you got? Um, at least n- not yet. Maybe in the future. How do, how do you think you would cope with that? Obviously, you haven't experienced it. Mm. Um, I feel when I truly live alone, and um, uh, like I'm just alone, alone. Mm-hmm. Fuck, probably honestly, as bad as that sounds, probably drinking, bro. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, right, that's right. Drinking. Fuck. Yeah. Um, had right now. Where you're at right now, has there been a moment where maybe your partner, your family, your friends just didn't understand you, so you had to sit alone in your room and think about shit? Well, I sit in my room a lot alone. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't always do that shit. Yeah. No, I mean, like, me personally, like, uh, I would say, like, just like everyone else, I have a stressful life, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have issues like everyone else. Yeah. And... Sometimes, well, not sometimes. Um, I talk to God every day. I, at least I think I am. So I'm always mm-hmm. thinking about him constantly. I'm always thanking him for the shit, like, on the way, driving over here. I was like, thank you for, like, giving I me saw the you the yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's like, um, he's allowed a lot, you know, to happen. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess that's the only person you can really be honest with, you know? Um I'm going to be real, most times, like, one-on-one conversation, like, actual conversation. Because this, how I see it is, like, I talk to God, but he's just listening, mm-hmm. you know? But those one-on-one convos where it's, like, I hear a voice back is mostly when, like, sometimes I'm drunk. Like, okay. maybe it's the crazy voice. <laughs> maybe it's not even him, you know? Yeah. But, like, that's, I feel like that's when probably I'm the most, like, vulnerable, I guess. Yeah. So that's when he comes in and he just, like, how do you say it? Because I feel like as a person, you don't want to look yourself in the mirror. Like, you don't want to admit your wrongs. You always want to feel like you're right. And he just comes in. It's like, nah, bro. Like, that's not how it is. Like, this is what you did. This is what led to this. And this is why it leads to that. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's crazy. You say that. Sometimes you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. But I think that resorts to, like, happiness. Like, if you're truly happy with who you are and the position you're in. So you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror because you have to really analyze your faults. You have to analyze the position you're in. What did it take to get there? What did you lose on, along the way? And when we get to that position, and sometimes when we lose shit, you know, sometimes we're just like, fuck, dude, how the fuck did I lose that along this way? Like, right here, hell yeah, I'm, in, I'm on top of the world. I'm, I'm in front of everybody. But, like, what people don't see is those other hours or you were just sitting alone in your room 
Mm-hmm. They just got the two minutes, one minute, 30 second clip of. No, for sure. Like, um, people think making videos is fucking easy. That shit is hard as fuck. I made over a thousand videos. Like, it, it's genuinely hard. There's times I sit alone in my fucking room. It's like three, four in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, I need to take this more serious. What route am I going to go? I can't be making this type of video anymore because I already did it. I need to think something else. Like, it's constant, like, pressure. And you got to keep going because if not, someone else is going to beat you. And, like, me personally, I want to be at the top. Like, I want to be the biggest Mexican content creator. That's how you go from the the Mexican dad to the Mexican referee. The Sunday yeah, League yeah, referee yeah. type of shit? That shit was funny as fuck, yeah. So, like, I, I want to be the biggest. Like, I want to mm-hmm. be on fucking TV, movies, then, like, I want to be, I guess, like, the the spotlight for Mexicans. Because, bro, bro, what's one brown Mexican up there? Name one. The Hot Cheeto dude, the one that just had his premiere <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, but, if, but if you look at everybody... No, I'm, I'm mainstream. I mean, yeah. like, mainstream. Yeah, it's, uh, it's George Lopez. That's all I. That's nah, all I would say. Back then, back then. Oh, okay. no, it's like I mean, but if you think about it, like even like bringing up that that Hot Cheeto movie, right? It you're bringing up a story of a man that like has years of years of fucking and everybody. I was just watching the other day. Everybody in that movie, like Emilio Rivera, um, a lot of the actors in there are all Hispanic actors mm. that literally all came together and. And created something. Eva Longoria, bro, produced this. Like, this is crazy. What she did? Bro. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't. Yo solo me como los she, she's todo, married man. to one of the actors um, from, uh, what is it? The Rookie. How the, the fuck do you know this? Es que él no tiene tiempo para ver esas novelas. Porque está viendo otras cosas. El hijo de su puta madre. No, I don't even turn my TV. A ver, enseña las manos, güey. Enseña las manos. ¿Por qué tienes pelos ahí, güey? traes crema ahí? <laughs> Yo veo crema ahí. You know, and, but it's, it, how you're, that's so dope that you're saying that because as you're 23 and what anybody else would say, like, oh, this was fucking young. He, don't, he doesn't know shit. You know, one time my guy here got told, oh, he's 23, Alfo hasn't lived enough. Mm. But it's just like, how, how can you, someone else judge what you've been through and what, what you know now? You could be 23, but you could have gone through hell and back yeah, yeah. throughout I always, those 20 I, I years. I always fucking get that shit. You know oh, what I'm you're saying? too young, bro. You don't know shit. Like I told you yesterday, yeah. um, I used to... You're, you're going to turn 24, no? Uh, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Estás invitado para la carne asada. Like I told you, I was a, I was a referee. Mm-hmm. MLS, todo. Yeah. Todo madre. Um, bro, I, professionally, you have to be 25 in order to get your, your badge. Mm-hmm. Shit, I was gonna be fucking in the loop for two years, three years, like type of shit. Like people are always like, "Oh no, that's more." I would do Sunday leagues type of shit. That's where I started at sixteen, fifteen. Yeah, and it would be obviously Sunday leagues is fucking adults, <laughs> fucking. You do qué? Tú tú estás morro? ¿Por qué estás referee? And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like you don't know what the fuck I've been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type of shit. The funny thing was when I, the first time I started like refing, the first first time I did referee, my dad was the soccer player. So the person on my ass was my dad. He was literally <laughs> screaming the fuck out of here. My dad was like, that was a foul. How the fuck was that a foul? I'm like, how the fuck do I take this? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 like that for shit, you know? Like, but I've always been like, I've always been the type of person like, if someone yells at me, I'm not, I'm not going to cry. Like, I would. Like, bro, I had, I had top like fucking shit or a couple couple weeks ago, there's a there's a, a San Bernardino Sheriff's Department, um, the fire department from LA. They had like a little tournament, soccer tournament, and I went to go ref that tournament, did the finals and everything. And this motherfucker was like trying to like intimidate me. This motherfucker was tall. He was like fucking six five type of shit, you know, firefighters type of shit. Yeah. And he's like, "Who the fuck are you?" For? I was like, "Well, I'm the ref, homeboy. Like, obviously, I know you're an authority type of shit, but like, I run this bitch, you know." Yeah. As a 23 year old homeboy, was like fucking 34 or some shit. Yeah. And he was trying to intimidate me, type of shit. Obviously, a normal type of person would feel like intimidated, kind of cry, type of shit like that. I was like, yeah. "Homeboy, I'll fucking stand up to you, type of shit, you know." And she it's like, "Fight you right now." Yeah, if I, <laughs> dude. I was like, I, I told him, I was like, "Dude, right now, you don't have the badge or anything. I'll fucking square up with you, homeboy." You're oh, I know. Bro, I know. Oh, bullshit yeah. aside. Oh, bullshit oh, aside. Yeah. No. That's <laughs> me, <mijo. laughs> That's me, And it's not. It's not that I'm a win. Obviously, bro, no, homeboy's yeah. gonna whoop the fuck out of my ass. But mm-hmm. it's like, 
sandy ground type of shit, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, sure. Ta- like, you know, but it's like the Hispanic family brings you up like that. Mm-hmm. You go through shit that normal people don't go through. Yeah. And it's like you you mature at a certain age, you mature earlier than you're supposed to. Because you start seeing shit, uh, at least well, in the Mexican community, you start seeing shit younger. Like, you mm-hmm. know, at least I can only speak for myself, right? But I feel like this is almost everyone. Yeah. But, like, I grew up watching all my deals smoke, drink, parties on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Fuck, I'm that deal now. Yeah, like... Holy shit. Uh, deal, <laughs> getting, uh, getting off work, drinking a 12-pack, yeah. eating, sleeping, wake <laughs> up the next morning, same thing, over yeah, and over, smoke yeah. and all that. So it kind of became, at least in my family, like, normalized, that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, you could... I feel like this is probably like Mexican culture. Like you could smoke cigarettes, you could drink all you want, but the minute you touch weed, like, it's, <laughs> it's done. Like it's over. Me falla. No, mijo, es que mi hijo es drogadito y una decepción. Um, some dude we had on a podcast. He was like a big um, he uh, does he he uh ships weed. What what does he do? They, they, they own a dispensary. They own a dispensary. So he gave us free stuff. I was just, I was like, all right, fuck it. Mm. I put it in my room. It smelled the fuck out of my room. Mm. So my mom walks in. She goes, huele marijuana. And it's not the first time they caught me with weed. Yeah. My parents are super chill. She's like, huele marijuana. I was like, fuck. I was like, what did I say? <laughs> I was like, oh, pues, no, nos dieron que marijuana, que esto, lo otro. I was like, ¿quieres? She goes, ¿cómo que quieres, cabrón? Mende lo mejor para hacer dinero, ¿cómo que quieres? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. But it's like, obviously, my my his, my parents are just they're a little bit more lenient. Mm. But other parents like marijuana, like no, no marijuana, yeah, droga, no. droga, stop shit. You know? My family is very like, no, hell no, like mm-hmm. they nah, fuck no. It's they see, they and, see me touch like, a uh, cigarette and, like, or something, and tattoos I'm and earrings, everything shit like that, yeah. everything like no, like and it, I think anything that has to do with da- quote unquote damaging the body, it's not a, it's not a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because in yeah. and what the world that they grew up in is, if you have tattoos, if you have earrings, if you do drugs, then you cannot get a great job. You cannot, you cannot have a career. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, if you, you start doing... Yeah, child support. Child support. How are you going to get a job with no tattoos? And you have uh-huh. tattoos, no te lo van a dar. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, does, does that happen? Do you, do you get criticized and do you get like profiled of like yeah of course it, it happens in this day and age where if you have tattoos and you're a certain skin color you get profiled yeah. yeah but like like i always say and i've always thought about it hey you make sure you do your work and you get to get to those places that no one thinks you're ever going to be in mm-hmm. you get invited why not because of how you look but what you've done yeah so it's like the opportunities that come through our positions it doesn't come because we're lucky. It's because hey, we have a track record of yeah, you what we do. Hard, we work hard. And that's the one thing that coming from Hispanic families, Mexican parents, it's the one thing to implement. Work your fucking ass off. Mm-hmm. No matter what the situation is, no matter how you feel, no matter what the weather is outside, go out and do what you have to do. Why? Because you depend on it. Yeah, no, like, for sure. Like, for example, my family, I remember when I started my videos, they were like, mm, like, mejor ponte a trabajar. Yeah, like, I was of course. still working and stuff, but like, ¿por qué no te metes de, a trabajar a de veras? Because yeah. I would work, but like, I'm not trying to like, it's not do what you, all that. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm just trying to work, get my paycheck, and that's, that's it. it. Save my money, yeah. that's it. Like, I have other visions. And my dad or my uncles, like, they're working jobs they don't fucking like because they have to. And they have to work hard to get that fucking money. So they expect their kids to do the same. To do the same shit. But it's yeah. just like, nah, like, you worked hard because you had to. Pretty I'm going to work hard in what I want to, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, I had my, my parents doubt me. I'm pretty sure your parents doubt me on this podcast. Well, it's, a, it's just one of those things where, how we said before, whatever we do in content-wise and, and something that literally can, how you said earlier, can be snatched the day of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're only going to believe it until they start getting the result. I don't blame you for not believing in my fucking vision. Mm-hmm. It's not your vision. It's my vision. Yeah. And that applies to anybody, family, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. I don't need you to believe in my vision. It's mine for a reason. No, and, and like, for me as well, like, I don't expect any support. I'm glad my, my family it, yeah. supports me for most of the part. My mm-hmm. friends support me and my girlfriend. So it's like, um, I'm glad because some other people don't have that shit and it sucks, you know? Yeah. yeah. But even if, I feel like even if I didn't have that support, I'll still do it. 
and, I, and I'll still continue my videos. And it would suck because that would tie back into what you guys mentioned earlier. That would make me even more lonelier. Yeah. So, like, right now, I don't feel as lonely because I have everyone helping me out, supporting me, rooting for me, you know? Yeah. But if I didn't have that, then, yeah. I, I it's because, like, I, I believe and I feel without it really knowing knowing you besides right now, like, you have this village behind you, these people behind you because you're putting in that word daily. You're doing your part in this whole thing, and they're seeing the result, too. You know what I'm saying? So it's But sometimes they don't see that. You know, they, sometimes they just, like, see you chilling in the room, and then they're like, no estás haciendo nada. Like, bro, I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'm like, thinking. This is a job, too, right, dude. Like, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, it's a lot of planning, bro. Like, yeah. you'll see a 30, 45-second clip, but... And do you see the preparation that just came yeah. with this shit? Yeah, like, because they only see one-minute videos, but they don't know, like, how long it took me to edit, how long it took me to go to the place, spend money on gas, on food, on whatever I need for, like, the props. Yeah. The referee jersey, you know how much that cost me? 50 fucking dollars, bro. And I'm sorry, hey, I'm, you got the cheap one. That's I'm sorry. what I'm saying, bro. I'm sorry, you got the cheap, yeah. you got the cheap one. She I got sponsored with this, so we're good. You got the cheap one, oh boy. And, like, I'm already fucking broke, so it's <laughs> like, I'm gonna spend $50 on a jersey I'm not even gonna use. I'm just use, using it for a video, and I don't even know if that video is gonna do well. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, it's a whole lot of shit you gotta it, fucking do. It's, an, shit was funny it's funny. an investment, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. bro. All yeah. that shit's an investment. Hell yeah. And I, when you come with it with, op, with an open heart, with an open mind, and you know you're doing this because you love it, hey, whatever that return is, what it could be tangible, it could be non tangible, like you know you fucking did it because you genuinely love this shit. No one, no one does or goes this far in a career in social media or whatever your your line is without genuinely loving this. Mm -hmm. Love making people smile. Love seeing the reaction of the people. Love getting recognized down the street of whoever's watching your content. Mm -hmm. Like again, it, there's a reason why that's happening, and there's a reason why you're getting this all back now because you you are super genuine to who you are and and, and the persona you are. That, yeah, you make this type of content, but when I meet you, you're just this person as well. And sometimes that's kind of hard to, like, separate. Because, like, for example, I'm white, I'm white, I'm Brian right now, right? Mm -hmm. But when I'm doing collabs, I'm, like, white brazy. And sometimes you, I know it sounds hella corny, but sometimes I take white brazy into family. Or white brazy into friends. Oh, or okay, white brazy okay. in, with my girlfriend. What's the difference between Brian and white brazy? And this is going to sound hella corny, too, but it's just, like, why Brazy, how I see it is, like, why Brazy is a character of characters. So okay. he's playing multiple characters. Like, it's an ego, I, I would say. And then Brian is just, like, how Brian is right now, just talking chill. And sometimes I take why Brazy and I throw it into my family or into my relationship or with my friends. And I know it's it could damage a little because I'm not being myself because I'm so involved into the internet already, where it's like it's kind of hard to differentiate myself sometimes, if that makes sense. I'm not Seriously. sure if that makes sense. No, it does because it's tough, man. Look, she's laughing because she's like, <laughs> I know this. She's like, <laughs> I've been through this shit right here. She's like, White Braze is a little bit crazier. <laughs> <laughs> does she have to check you? Uh, yeah, but it's not like, hey, stop, or hey, like, no, but it's just like little things, and I'm glad for it, you know? Yeah. But, um, cause yeah, no, like if people don't check me, then I'm just going to continue. Like sometimes I thank God, like, cause there's times I'm such a hater, bro. Like, bro <laughs> he said, I'm, he said, he bro, said it straight I'm such a hater. I'm, I'm a hater. And I don't mean it like from a, I want to take it away from you. I, I don't mean oh, it from okay, that. Okay. But yeah. it's just like, I be seeing some creators and I'm like, how the fuck do you have that collab? Like how, how did you get to that position? And I'm bigger than you and I'm not even trying to sound like that but it's just like how did you do it and yeah. like I'm, I don't want to take it away from you or anything like that but it's just like it makes me like fuck bro like why am I not there yet it's, it's like, just why like why can't I be there yet mm -hmm. and I thank God that I'm not there yet because if this is how I'm reacting now I can't imagine to when I do have it and then I'm reacting how I don't want to like yeah. react. What's well, how that saying goes, man? What's meant for you will be meant for you, yeah. and what's not won't will never be in your todo, life. Todo yeah. su tiempo, todo su tiempo. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those things, that I, and I've been through that too, right? Like I'm like, damn, why the fuck are we doing so much, and we're being so consistent in doing this, and we're not having those opportunities? 
But in how you said, man, you know, there's a reason why the power above didn't give us that position at that time. Mm -hmm. Because personally, we just weren't ready. Yeah. You know, if when people get into social media game, they think, oh, you're going to make tons of money, thousands, millions of dollars. You're going to get all these brand deals. Da, da, da. No. And, and realistically, I, and I, I could put this on anything. Sometimes if you get that amount of, of cash to you, some people just don't know what to do with it. And it put and it puts them in a in a position that they you know money can't save you no more. Yeah. And you know I think coming from where we came from, where I came from, man, I knew what it was to grind for twenty dollars. Hey, corta la yarda, lava el carro. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're gonna be doing this, 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 and to get ten dollars, to get fifteen dollars. I've been in situations where I have fifteen dollars on my account or I have zero dollars on my account. It's like yo, but these positions here are the are the reason why, because I know how I was here. Doesn't mean when I have this up of money, I switch up. It's just, I got to take care of it more. Yeah. Because uh, how they say, the more famous you get, the more money you get, the more people come and try to take. Yeah. You know, and 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 takers always prey on givers. Mm -hmm. So when you allow everybody to be in your circle, when you allow everybody to be around you at these highest moments, they may not be the same ones that be in your lowest moments. And, and that's what I'm also afraid of. And I know what I'm going to sa say right now is going to sound hella, like, cocky and stuff. But, like, I know I'm going to have money in the future. Like, yeah. that, that's my goal. Like, I want to take care of my family. Like, yeah. I want to be a multimillionaire type shit. I want to take care of everybody. But I'm afraid that people are going to take advantage of it, you know? And I, I'm just afraid for that. But, like, it is bound to happen, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. can't really control that. And sometimes, like... With the whole fame thing, like, the more bigger you get, the more people are going to start seeking, like, clout, attention, and stuff like that. I mean, sometimes, like, the other day, uh, last week, or a couple of days ago, this week, um, I was at Target with my boy. And I was just chilling. You know, I bought, uh, I bought deodorant. And then I went back to, I went back home. And then uh, I was checking my accounts, and I was checking my DMs, because I like to respond to some people. And someone sent me a picture of me at Target from hella far away just taking, <laughs> like, a picture of me. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. This shit is scary. Like, people taking pictures of you just randomly, like, now, I, like, I'm starting to see it like, bro, I'm not going to have any type of privacy in the future or anything, you know? It says, I mean, one thing, too, is when you're in the eyes of the world, you have to be, you have to be ready for what's to come with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're just in the light, bro, but one thing that I would say... How I tell him and how I tell anybody is like, bro, when you stay true to yourself, everything will be okay, no matter what yeah. happens. No matter <clears throat> no matter if, if this person or that person tries to come and take, you stay true to you, stay true to who you are and what your purpose is. Bro, there's nothing in the world that can come and take anything from you because you're genuinely you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, whether people... No one here needs to like us or love us, mm. but you're going to respect me because of yeah. what I, who I am and what I do. If you have an opinion after that, hey, that you're entitled that's you. to it. Yes, yeah. on, you. That's on you. Our content isn't made for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can be like, oh, man, that wasn't funny. But maybe that content just wasn't for me. But yeah. it was for him. Yeah. Same way, like, in podcasting. Bro, everybody has great conversations, but maybe that conversation wasn't for that person. No, for sure. And, uh, like, I agree with that because... I remember at the beginning, I was only doing videos to, like, please my followers and stuff like that. Then I was, and when I would post the videos that I genuinely liked, people would be like, no, we don't like this video, do this. And, I'm, and then I would still do the videos they liked, right? And then it came to a point where I was like, man, fuck that. Like, this ain't their fucking yeah. channel. This ain't their page. Like, this yeah. is me. I'm going to do what the fuck I want. So either you like it, you like it. And if you don't, get the fuck out. Like, I don't care, like, at this point anymore. When you, when you start when you start trying to please everybody, man, you start losing yourself. Yeah. And you start yeah. getting, and you become unhappy. Yeah. And the, the goal here is, man, are, are you happy with who you are right now? Well, I think happy, like... That's that's hard to describe because happy just comes in waves. At least that's how I see it. Like, you can't be happy forever. And I don't think you're meant to be happy forever. God puts you here para que pases por cosas que no te gustan. You yeah. have to do sacrifices. You have to do things you don't like, meaning you're not happy. So right now, like, I have to do some sacrifices. I have to do some stuff. But I'm content, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not yeah, like, yeah. oh, hell yeah, I'm hella happy right now. You know, like, uh, no, I, I don't. It's hard to describe happy. Like, it, 
because everybody's happy is different. Yeah. I guess right now I could say I'm happy because I'm drinking and I feel good, you know, yeah. but like morally or stuff like that, like I'm content, you know, yeah. I, I, it's just hard to describe that. It's um, true. How you said it comes in waves. Yeah. And I think the biggest, the biggest thing here on it, on, the biggest here in, the, in this position is when you're alone, who are you and how do you feel? You know what I mean? When no one's around you, when no views or no people that follow you are around you, who are you really? Are you just masking who you who you really are and you're trying to pretend that nothing is wrong or are you really trying to analyze and really attack the issue? That's why, like, in the journey that I'm in right now, it sound, as funny as it sounds or cliche as it sounds, like, yeah, I've been giving myself more to God. But it's because when I got lonely, man, the voices started speaking louder to me. And I'm like, fuck. Man, bro, like, we're in the gospel right now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. It's just, it gets, it gets we were, loud. We were, the, we were in the club like, hey, hey, hey. And my was like. <laughs> he was praying all night yesterday. <laughs> I, I need to. And that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's like, good. I, like I, I really need we're to. We're the sinners, bro. We're, we're the sinners. It is, the, the biggest battle is that no one sees, right? And the biggest thing there is hey, it's all fun and games and laughing, but it's just like, who's saving yeah. you when you can't even save yourself? Mm. That's a bar. That's a bar. That's a can can you say right now, what's your highlight of your your journey in this? It's the highlight of my TikTok career. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, As, again, but it, it's it's not an easy career, bro. Like literally, it's not easy to build such a big following and get constant thousands and millions of reviews. The thing is, like, you may not you may not think that uh -huh. you may not think that. But when you come in from an outside in, right, there's people that drop videos every day and get how you started at the beginning. 50 views. Yeah. 100 of views. Whatever. But you're not getting that anymore. You're getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So there has to be, at one point, a sense of like, it's like, cabrón, la verga. I know how to do this. You know what I'm saying? But like, I, is there a highlight that you have had that kind of made you, made you seem like or think like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yet, honestly. And I think it's because genuinely how I feel, genuinely, I feel like I'm not big. Like, I genuinely feel like that. Like, there's people way bigger than me. Yeah. And, again, like, this could all be taken away literally in a minute. They could mm -hmm. ban my account. Yeah, se acabó todo. Yeah. So that's why I, like, I try not to take it too much for granted, if that makes sense. But also, I try not, like, I'm trying to create something where they can't take it away from me, yeah. you know? So, like, the highlight, I guess, coming out here doing these podcasts, like, I appreciate it a lot. But it still doesn't make me feel like, wow, like, I made it type shit, you know? Yeah. I don't know when that would come. I feel like, I, I don't know. I feel like, genuinely, that would only happen when, like, again, like I was telling you earlier, like, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God, and he's like, hey, man. You made it. That's when I feel like I would be like, okay, fuck yeah, I did it. I made it. But until then, like, nah, like, I can meet the biggest celebrity right now. I, I, this is what I say right now. Maybe when I meet him, it might be different, right? <laughs> but, like, I can meet the biggest celebrity right now and make a collab or something and be cool friends, and I'll still be like, nah, I, I, I didn't make it yet. Like, I feel like that would only, I would only say that when it's a one on one with God. And he's like, hey, man, you made it. Don't be so, like, tough on yourself or some shit like that. That's when I feel like I'd be like, oh, shit, damn. And then that would change up my whole, like, lifestyle and perception and, and all that. For, for the ones that say that you're too young to understand what life is, like, what's your, your uh, response to that? I think it just depends on what because, yeah, there are some situations where uno está bien joven, like, no man entender, like, if you give advice to a 15 year old and he doesn't take it's because he doesn't understand he's he doesn't he's not at that age yet where yeah. he could understand right there i would say that only applies to certain situations 
you know, like, estás muy joven, no sabes cómo es, you know, mm -hmm. but I guess just like, hey, you never know what someone's going through, you know, and maybe they've had a harder life than you, and they're younger, and you're older, and you had an easy fucking life, you know, Yeah. so I guess try not to judge as much, because yeah. there's people younger than me, I'm 23, so there's people younger than me that have gone through way harder, there's kids in Africa, Mexico, El Salvador, fucking, they're starving, they ain't got parents that they don't got a roof over their head. And, you know, I might think, like, my life is hard, but their life is way fucking harder. And yeah. I'm not going to be like, tú no sabes. Tú no estás grande, tú todavía no sabes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to sound stupid. Yeah. So it's like. You know, I think it's even funnier, or I was saying as respectfully as stupider when, estás bien joven. Motherfucker, I went to high school with you. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm young. <laughs> Well, I had you for the same math class. <laughs> so what does that tell you? So it's just like, you don't, you don't have to be a certain age to know what life is and what yeah. life is about. Mm -hmm. It's just maybe what you went through may not be the same as the person mm -hmm. next to you. Yeah. What he went through isn't the same shit I went through, the same shit for you. Yeah. Like, it's everybody different. But what brings us into the same, into the same uh, room is our life. Yeah. What life happened to us individually that got us there because of the way that we responded to whatever happened. Uh -huh. um, not to get too crazy into this, but has there been something like traumatic that has happened in, in your life that made you change and or look at life a little differently? Um, I don't want to get like hella personal into it because... I'll get personal uh, for what's going on. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean like as in like too detailed because... Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, I feel like some things should stay offline. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Most but respectful. Overall, I could say drugs. So, you know, seeing people go to jail, um, cops coming into your house. <laughs> Are you laughing? Yeah. He's like, he's laughing. He's <laughs> I'm laughing. sorry. He's <laughs> laughing. You're, you're laughing at my pain? ¿Te estás riendo de mí? No, por eso uno no dice las cosas porque uno se ríe de uno. ¿A quién le está diciendo shut up? ¿A mí me está diciendo shut up? <laughs> no, but... Um, Traumatic, I would say, it's kind of hard to describe trauma because I feel like trauma, like, could be something so little or, like, something so huge, you know? Okay. When I think of trauma, I think, like, when someone says, I went through trauma, I feel like maybe they got, like, shot. <laughs> they saw someone got shot. They got raped. Or, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, know. Hey, like, okay like, well. To me, that's, like, traumatic, okay, right? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Like, PTSD type shit, you know? Yeah. But um, I guess <laughs> drugs overall, you know, um, I've seen it and I've seen what it does to people, the people closest to you. So I guess that's, I guess the trauma. Yeah. But, um, it comes in, it, it, it could be, and it comes in different, in different ways and different waves. Mm -hmm. Like it could, how you said trauma to you may mean something and to us it means something else. Yeah. But again, everybody's in, entitled to what their life is. Like, it, your life may be hard, and I may see it like, ah, no yeah. mas? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> no mas. But it's just like, man, maybe that should affect you a lot worse yeah. than what it, what it would have affected me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, again, like how you mentioned earlier, you come from a, a split family home, but blessed that you had still present. Parents were still present. Dads were still present. Mm -hmm. So there is a blessing in that, too, because you have two different, two different styles parenting you at yeah. the same time you know what i mean sure. yeah. now you said they were there they're present yeah there's some some kids that that don't have anything i don't even know who my dad is or who my mom was or yeah. i was in the system for x amount of time like mm -hmm. that's also another type of trauma yeah. but what, what i'm trying to get to with with bringing up um your trauma and age is just like hey there's things that people see this happy dude on social media so it's just like what when you put on that smile on social media what did it take for you to smile that day? Damn. What the, oh, shit. It's that gospel. Um, Tune into my other channel. What's that one quote? It's like, people who smile are hurting the most. or so shit. <laughs> yes. No, the, from the Pivot Podcast, they're like, sometimes check on the guy that smiles the most, <laughs> man. Because sometimes. <laughs> because we're the He's same one we're talking like, about. It's like, it's just a hell of funny to me, but um, <laughs> he's sad for you, sad. No, we, we love you, homeboy. We love you. Yeah, yeah, you good. Man, when I you No, um, you, I don't know. It's just like shit's gonna happen regardless. Mm -hmm. La vida va a seguir. Va a pasar cosas, aunque no nos guste. Va a pasar. 
So you can either sit the fuck down and bitch and cry or fucking just keep doing what you're doing. Like that's there's only two ways you could really go about it. Yeah. Either depressed and you start harming yourself or doing some weird shit to be honest. Or you could just fucking get the fuck over it and continue it, you know? Mm-hmm. Obviously, everybody's going to have their struggle, right? You can't really judge on that. Yeah. But those are really the only two options you got. Yeah. You know, so it's just continue. Like, yeah, I'm going through some shit, and I'm always going to go through some shit. And s- today it's hard. Tomorrow is going to be harder. And the next day is going to be easy. Like, it, it just switches. What age were you when, you when you went through some? I think, honestly, it all started probably when I was, like, 14. Because at that time, I had to start working. Okay. So, at that time, you know, we ain't had money like that. So, we had to start working. I remember my first job was at a Mexican restaurant. So, I was like a waiter, busser, cashier with all that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I started working at KFC. (laughs) I had hella jobs. So, I worked at... I had hella jobs. uh, I worked at... I had hella jobs. I I worked at a Mexican restaurant, KFC, Panda Express... And then um, I see you working at Panda Express. I'm sorry. I see, I see <laughs> I with the, the hat on, he throws. Yeah, I was and he was there with the with the big old. I was with the walk. I was with the walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was really mixing, but um, <laughs> what's it the called? rap career fool. That's what it came. Yeah, from. yeah, yeah. That's you know what, what that's where it started for me. <laughs> but not like just fucking like like I said. It's just people struggle. People go through shit, and it's mm-hmm. either like you go one way, which is. Not the route I would want to take. Yeah. Or you could just get the fuck over it, keep it going, keep it pushing, and that's it. As a 14-year-old, how did he cope with that? Huh? As a 14-year-old, how did he cope with that? Obviously, you have to work at a, at a very, very young age. Mm-hmm. I think working kept my mind off family issues, mm-hmm. honestly. Okay. And at that time, like, you're 14, 15, at his joven, you're a boy. Oh, fuck, I just made 100 bucks this week. Fuck yeah, I want to make 200 next week. Fucking mm-hmm. hot wheels. Hey, like, that's all you think about. Like, just money, money, money. Until, like, they come in, they're like, hey, la renta, mm-hmm. hey, la agua, la luz, el teléfono, <laughs> la seguranza. That's a fuck. I hate la seguranza. Like, fuck. And then you're like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> like, chill. Like, hey, like, whoa. I, I only made $100. Yeah. What the fuck? Y los taxes? Like, bro, nah. Like, yeah. I, I, I honestly, Brian, I feel like. The way the way you're answering these questions, it's just you. I, I feel like you were just you never put in a position or really allowed yourself or been in a safe place to really talk about emotions. Where like hey, you not you may not be good dog, and I can see it. Yeah. But because of your grind and your grit that you've been taught, you're like fuck it. I feel sad today. I gotta keep going, bro. It doesn't matter yeah. what it is. Because in all reality, people don't give a fuck about guys' issues. I'm sorry, like that's just how it is. Like. It, no one gives a fuck about a guy. You, you could be a girl, they'll give a fuck about your emotion. Yeah, like, they'll take care of you, whatever. But as a guy, you can't be sitting there fucking, I'm sad today, and I'm not going to go to work, and I'm not going to do... You can't do that as a guy. You can't yeah. be no fucking pussy. I'm, I'm sorry for cussing, like, and all that, but... Mm-hmm. You, um, we're, we're on Children's <laughs> Channel. <laughs> children's Channel. Oh, yeah, love it. Our audience <laughs> is children now, but no, no. But, like, as a guy, you can't... Do that. Like, you you, just, you have a family. You have yeah. a mortgage. You can't tell your wife, hey, I'm feeling sad today. I'm not going to go into work. Like, you can't do that. Like, you have to fucking work whether you like it or not. You have to get over what you got to get over. Mm-hmm. It's going to take some while, of course. But it's just like, as a guy, like, yeah, there's no fucking time to be fucking sad and all that shit. Sadly, you know, it's just. I would it's, honestly, I would just disagree with you because it just depends on the room you're in. Mm-hmm. And who you're allowed, who you're around with, like as crazy as funny as it sounds, these people here have seen me fucking cry, mm-hmm. and they just made me feel that safe space because it's like, hey, if whatever reason today after this you start crying mm-hmm. because you're talking about a certain trauma that you went through or a certain position you're in right now, mm-hmm. hey, bro, it's cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna look at you any less. And I know society does that. You start crying on camera, you start putting it out there. Yeah, they're gonna look at you as a weak person, a weak man. No one wants a weak man because you're but not. I, I think it depends, and we gotta distinguish because, like, being vulnerable once, like, or a couple times, that's fine. But I'm talking about like on a daily basis where you gotta tell, like, for example, like, you know, you have a whole bunch of stress already, and if you start throwing that onto your family, like, you you just can't. Be yeah, there's it. there's no need. Yeah. I I think one of the strongest moves that you can ever make is you can be depressed, going through anxiety, or whatever. You don't gotta tell it. 
You just got to make sure you do whatever work mm-hmm. you got to do and you go and do it. Yeah. You don't got to tell nobody about it. Yeah. You don't be like, hey, if I'm depressed, I'm going to go work today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get my ass up and I'm still gonna go do it today. I feel yeah. sad. Whoop de do. Feel sad. Nah, fuck you. Don't feel sorry for me. I still gotta get up and I still gotta yeah. go because la renta, yeah. la aseguranza, el teléfono. Bills, See, everything. when you have kids, diapers, like, no, man, yeah. that's just expensive. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Really like, la don't, leche. La leche. No, 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 la no, ropa, no. la ropa. Dude. No, hey, I got a shirt for you, homeboy. It's, <laughs> it's just honestly, it's just everything. But it's just one of those things where, hey, when you're in a safe space and you're around people that really will never judge you for being emotional, mm-hmm. it's a strong mm-hmm. and powerful room. Yeah, because again, it's just this. Whatever we say here, outside of the out off the camera, hey, don't need to be said anywhere. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, this is it. No, for like, for example, like I was mentioning earlier, my friend group, those are the only people I could really be real with. Yeah. You know, like, because they would understand me as, as a man. Because they've they seen you. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be with them, like, constantly every time I hang out with them, like, oh, like, this is happening in my life. Like, no. That, yeah, like, like, no. Like Richard said, like, I don't, every time I come hang out with you guys, I don't want to fucking make you feel sad or feel sorry for me. Like, yeah. but I got my own shit to do with mm-hmm. like, like, I, I, I want to get to you, and I want to know five positive things that you've done for that fucking week. Yeah, my, our thing here is like, yeah, we're gonna hang out, bro. I don't want to. If you're gonna tell me an issue, I want to hear the solution by the time you're done. Yeah, give me the solution by the time you're done with your sentence. Mm-hmm. So age never plays a factor in this, bro. I'm 27 with two kids, 23, but is right next to me, sitting down, and we live life like. Like, we've been together for fucking ages, dog. I hated the fuck out of this. Shut the I didn't, fuck. I didn't Here like, we go again. Yeah, I didn't come like on, Vamonos. Nah. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll get down with this for any fucking day, fam. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, hatred, you're going to fight like, a father with kids? <laughs> <laughs> what, I really, type, what type of person are you? I'm going to be like, <laughs> Noah, I'm sorry. No, I already told him. I was like, I was like I'm just going to laugh, give him a kiss on the forehead, and be like, it's okay, mijo. Relax. Sit back down. But what a lot of people don't know, after he tells that story, he's like, yo, when I became a high school coach, he was my right hand man. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's where the relationship blossom is. Like, all right, I'm gonna take this. At that time, I'm he, gonna said, take he the, said exactly what. Oh no, he's too young. It's too young. I was yeah, like, he, he said but his dad. Shit. His dad is my right hand man. He was like, no, that a chance. So I was like, fuck it, let's try it out. Let's see where this goes, bro. Best decision I ever made in my life. And again. Your age doesn't fucking matter, bro. It's how you act upon situations. Mm-hmm. Again, you're maneuvering right now in life, bro. Like, you fuck... What's, what did I say earlier? Act like you've been here. Act like you've been here, yeah. This is not new to you. You've been here before. It's just maybe you thought about it and just now you're here. You're just like, oh, shit. I didn't know. Yeah. But I'm here because I was meant to be here. Not because I was gifted this. No, I was meant to be here. Yeah, you know what you know. I'm saying? So it's like, again, you got to give yourself those flowers. Brian Definitely. from... The Bay Area doing all this fucking noise that leads you up to Los Angeles, that leads you up to all these opportunities, not because you're a nobody, bro. You're a somebody. Yeah, and no, no I, I understand. You what know you what I mean? I, I, no, I 100% understand what you guys mean. It's just like in my head, it's like I mentioned to you, the only time I feel like I would really feel like that is when God says, Cyrus K, like, yeah. hey, you made it. You Thank feel you. like. You- Personally, obviously we all we all we all believe in something spiritual above us. But in that sense, you think it's it's more like a self accomplishment type of thing. It's not it's not only God speaking to you; it's you being satisfied with what you've done. Him being a him being his biggest critic. Exactly. There you go. Because it's at the end of the day, is you versus you, bro. Yeah. And if you're not satisfied with yourself, everyone can tell you that you're doing fucking amazing, but you're not going to be satisfied with the. Criticize think, you've been giving yourself, you know? I, I think for me, it's just more like, I could die tomorrow, and I really want to go to heaven. So, like, <laughs> oh, shit. So, so, so I want to make, I, I make sure, like, God, like, I, I don't know. It's just in my head. It's just like when God says, hey, good shit, or hey, you made it, like, that's when my whole mentality could change. Okay. But right now, it's just like, yeah, I'm in L.A., and I appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate the new people I'm meeting because, like, bro, I was just some kid from – I'm just some kid from Pittsburgh, you know? And no one out there is really, like – this is going to be the cocky me, but no one's big as me out there, you know? Can you? Yeah. So, but, like, think about it, too. Sometimes his message to you doesn't come in words. 
Mm. It comes with opportunities that he's giving you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. things that come, it's a, I had said it, uh, I've thought about this even before now that I'm in, I'm in like an, I'm a 45 day type of change. And it's one of those things like, hey, if you have something for me, if you're going to speak to me, show me. Mm-hmm. So maybe it doesn't come from words. It comes from him giving you opportunities and showing you like, hey, I'm going I'm to give you this today. Yeah. I want you to be here and I want you to realize that where you're at. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, a, a good question I think here that lands here is what is one of your deepest fears in life? Um, Failure. I feel like, like if, like if all this shit fails, then like, what the fuck am I going to do? You know? So I think that's why I have to like really fucking make it as in not just video wise, but it's just like my overall goal, like Brian, like his goal is freedom. I don't want no one to tell me what I can and can't say, what I can and can't do, how much money they're going to take away from me or shit like that. Like, I want to be able to say like, I'm him. You know, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I'm him. Oh, that's, right. Like, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Like, you can't tell me nothing. That's the type of level I'm trying to be on. Yeah. So, like, that's my goal. And that's, like, my my deepest fear where I don't reach that. I, I would say, at least. Yeah. So, yeah, no, like, I really got to fucking make it. Like, there there can't be no. There's no, there's no plan B here. But yeah, this like, there's, is, there's this no is the only. I know. Like, there can't oh. be. And, and I don't wish upon it. I don't wish there was a plan B. Yeah. Because. No. I think the rock. That's just giving an opportunity to fail. Yeah, like, nah, yeah pretty that. much. Yeah, yeah exactly. There you go. Yeah. Like, oh, like, yeah. if this don't work out, then I'm going to do I have this. this. Like, no, no, no. No. I'm going to get my freedom, whether it be with the videos, whether it be with the music, whether it be working a normal nine to five job. Who fucking knows? Mm-hmm. God only knows, right? He's going to take yeah. me different paths. Yeah. But no, like, that, that is not an option. I, no, fuck that. Like, I got to be free. I have to. Is, is there, you, you mentioned. Earlier in, in this in this episode, which is really great, um, blessed to have you here. To be honest, you mentioned earlier that you haven't talked. You and your dad don't talk about this. Mm-hmm. You don't talk about content. You don't talk about stuff like that. Would there be something that you would tell your dad if, like, if he watches this, like that you would personally tell him? Hmm. Damn. Change. (laughs) (laughs) We all need a change. (laughs) Take the mic away from this. Take the the mic away from this. Uh, Turn the fucking mic off. No, I mean, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, that's what I mean by change. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Because, like, hey, they went through a hard fucking life. You know, like, they Mm -hmm. had nothing. You know, how they are... uh, my dad always used to say, he's like, yo no tenía nada. Yo iba a la escuela caminando dos horas, like, sin agua, sin pa- luz. Pasé el pinche like, el río, pasé yeah. la montaña. Había un tigre allá. <laughs> like, type shit, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it, yeah, they're over, like, being over dramatic. But some, like, bro, they were playing with sticks on in the dirt. Like, mm, they yeah. ain't have food. Like, how we have, we don't have, they didn't have lights, TV, like, all that type of shit. So it's like, they're so... It's just that old head mentality, and they gotta be. Damn. There's so much suppressed emotion. I would say that they have that they need to like change that. Something you appreciated of your your dad's. Uh, very hard working, bro. Like my dad's hombres. Like it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, they were depressed. They were sad at everything. Pero trabajo. Pagar la renta. Había comida. Yeah, we she, were broke. She has to get done. We she has broke. to get done. We were really broke. Pero siempre había, aunque sea una tortilla on the fucking table. Con sal ever... y limón. Hey, yes, con sal. Know? Fuck yeah, tortillas like, con sal. That shit was the fucking like that, best. That was always there, you know. Maybe the lights are turned off, but we got food on the table. And that's yeah. all that fucking matters, you know. With candles, so, have you guys had that? Like when, when, you, don't, when you don't have for the light bill no more, like the candles. Yeah, me right now. Tortillas con light. sal. <laughs> Hell yeah, that shit was the fucking yeah. best, bro. Do you guys have PG&E out here? Or is there a different type of um, like brand? What? PG&E, like a power. So who's your guys' power? Edison. Edison. We have Edison. Oh, okay. So Edison. over there is PG&E. But yeah, that saves you on yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. bill. Edison doesn't candles. give a fuck if you miss Hell a payment. Nah, they'll they'll take your shit off. <laughs> environmental costs. They're going to charge you <laughs> hey, because of the street or the... I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? Yeah, I didn't know about that until like I moved out the first time to an apartment. I think light regularly, even during summer, was like, 
eighty, ninety dollars. Uh-huh. Cool, chilling. Moved into a house. Yeah, you got that. Went AC through summer, on. Mm. but four hundred. I was like, yo, that's so cool. Apaga las luces. Apaga yeah, todo. Hey, so, yeah. All right, check it. No, I, I, I would, I would sleep over at his house a lot. Uh-huh. Like I would go to his house a lot, and he's like, my guy. Apaga la luz, no? Apaga la luz. <laughs> I'll be like, all right. Hey, that's daytime savings. No, like, I remember when I was little, we had, like, an, we would have to buy, like, a portable AC. Like, the one you put in the window with, like, wood under. And then I'd turn it on, like, I'd have it all all on, and my dad was like, apaga esto ya. I'm like, bro, it's like 200 degrees. Me vale. Apagalo ya. Tú no pagas los biles o sí? And I'm fucking like eight. No, I'm like, no. I, I can do that now. That's I can turn the AC on the whole fucking night. That's why when that shit is hot, bro, instead of playing the AC, because that shit going to fucking get up the bill, I put three <laughs> different fans along the bed. I'm just right there, all freezing the shell. Like, or you, or you get some ice and you put it on the fan. Yeah. <laughs> just have it blow out the ice. Yeah, man. Um, it, <laughs> has there been a, a, a great piece of advice that you have gotten? Damn, I got hella quiet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. I don't know. It's just uh, <laughs> keep, keep doing your videos, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just, I don't All really right, get worst a lot piece, of advice. Worst piece of advice that you ever got. In. Worst? Worst. If you can't even think of the best. Yeah, you know, nah, like, like, I, the worst. I really don't get advice like that. I don't know. That's, yeah. Sigue tomando. That's the worst. Yeah. Sigue tomando. Oh, boss. I guess... No uses las drogas. I guess that's... <laughs> no, that's not the worst. I mean, that's oh, the best. Oh, I said that was the worst. <laughs> that was the best. Say yes though. to drugs, kids. <laughs> Say yes to drugs. He, he didn't play on there. Tienes que y tomar todos los días. <laughs> Eso sí es un hombre. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully, we're, we go at least one for three on this one. <laughs> is there a piece of advice that you would give your 15-year-old you? Don't fail us one for three right now. <laughs> Don't fail us, bro. Don't do drugs. A, a piece of advice I would give my 15 year old self, bro, yeah. invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> oh my <laughs> invest God. Invest in Bitcoin, bro. Out of everything. You'll be a fucking millionaire. <laughs> bro, think about it. Invest in fucking Bitcoin, bro, and then sell like three, four years later, bro. You could buy a fucking mansion. I can't invest in Bitcoin. So, yeah. I'm illegal. I can't invest oh, in Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so I'm glad I was born here. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> that was shots. That was a fucking shot. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Fuck. Dude, all right. I'm, I'm you, know, you know what's crazy? I'm, I'm like, so I would say I'm probably like the fourth or fifth person in my family that has papeles. Like that was like actually because most of my family. Oh shit! I, didn't, I shouldn't. Never mind. <laughs> Guys, we're all here legally. We're all here legally. I've said it a couple no, times. No, they, they, no. They're not out for me <laughs> anyway. Ciudadanos, eh, tenemos la green card, el citizenship, y todo. Estamos we aquí legalmente. Got, estamos aquí buen, buen y sanos. No one has raided my house. I've, I've said it. I'm illegal a couple times before. No one has said shit. <laughs> Dylan, they're here at the door. From <laughs> Uncle. Te están buscando. Te están buscando. Is there a quote that you had today? Uh, Fuck, no I tomen didn't. en la noche porque mañana sí, trabajan. Sí, sí, sí. Tienen responsabilidad, son adultos. No, no la caguen en la noche porque en la mañana tienen que despertarse a hacer trabajo. No, I'm just playing. No, I mean, for someone obviously that's out there struggling and stuff, obviously you're loved, you're blessed, and we care about you. You're always support. Why are you laughing? I'm, I'm trying to. Laughing. I'm trying to have a serious conversation with someone. Have it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, pretty much. I mean, you're loved, you're blessed. Thank God for another day in life. And you're not alone. There's always family and friends that can help you out, support you. Just ask for help. It's not bad for us to ask for help. So pretty much that's it. I didn't have a call, but I want to say something out there. Do you have one, bro? Um, la vida está dura, pero hay que chingarle. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say, la vida está dura, pero está más dura la verdad. <laughs> I thought you were going to pull that shit out. I'm sorry, bro. No, que son estas porquerías. Cochinadas. ¿Eh? Hablan de Dios y andan hablando de estas porquerías. ¿Eh? No empiecen con sus cochinadas, por favor. Oh, fuck. I thought you were going to say... He was, a, he was saying a great call and you fucking ruined it. Now, you see, he's closed again. All right, say it again, That's, say it again, homeboy. Say it again. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was gonna pull that bitch out. He's bringing like, out the Mexican dad right now, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, as a Mexican dad, what would you? What, what quote would he say? Oh, as a Mexican yes. dad. 
You know what's crazy? I'll say the quote, but um, I'm not Mexican dad. Like, I don't have kids. So it's, it, I find it funny when people call me, like, Mexican dad. Does that mean, like, I do a good job? Like You do a good fucking job. She, Hell yeah. She, she has four kids. He doesn't know about them. <laughs> hey, 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 hold up. She's here. Hold up. Whoa. <laughs> nah, um, fuck. No, pues hay que chingarle porque así es la vida. La vieja te va a estar chingando. Los niños te van a estar chingando. Pero así es las cosas. Uno tiene que trabajar como hombre y así es la vida. Y así es como Dios lo quiere. So, that's right. That's Salud. That's right. That's Salud. right. Salud. Salud. my guys. Salud. 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 Brian, thank you. Bye, Breezy. Thank you. Dylan, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Vámonos. Yes, sir. Fuck, my guys. Woo!